Forget inspiration. Habit is more dependable. Habit will sustain you whether you're inspired or not. Octavia Butler. My friends, habit is the most important thing you can develop to get the things you want in life. Getting up every morning, getting out there and doing it, spending 10 to 15 minutes in the market each and every market day. That is where, that is what's required to master these charts. I've been on this planet now just over 60 years and the most powerful thing I've discovered is the power of habit. And just finished writing an article. I write every day, as, as you can tell who joined me. Sit down and spend time pouring my thoughts out on paper. And I will tell you, when it's learning to trade, whether it's learning life lessons, whatever it is you want to do, if you will, and there is a real magic to this, if you will just sit down for a few minutes every day and pour over the questions you have on paper, you will find that your mind has to slow down as your hand writes. You will also find that your subconscious is engaged and the answers that are there or that will percolate out of your subconscious as you ask those key questions are invaluable. You also use that with your trading. When you're looking at trades that worked, why did they work? Trades that didn't work, why didn't they work? Why are, what problems are you facing with the charts? If you ask those questions and mull that over in writing in your trader's journal, you will find answers again and again and again. But if you don't, you won't. And again, if you don't persevere, if you don't have that habit of being in the market every day, you're just not going to make, you're not going to have the kind of development that you want and that you need. Now, let's jump into these charts. Stocks are mixed for the day. Bonds are up a little bit, gold down a little bit, Bitcoin up a little bit. Let's first start as we always, almost always do with the S&P 500. What does this week look like so far? We have a solid green candle. That means a slowdown in the down movement, little wick on top, bigger wick on the bottom. Price percent oscillator still heading down, spiking over a little more than this last week. Derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. S&P was up for the day just a little bit, 0.15%. Don't forget, friends, Patreon friends, what do we have coming out tomorrow? As always, sending out to you on a Thursday, you'll have your 20 weekly vertical crossovers. Be ready for that email. Send that out usually just before, just after the market closes. What do we see here on our two-day chart? Well, we saw where the S&P plumbed its recent low back on Tuesday the 21st. Then it went sideways up a little bit. This latest two-day candle is a down candle. Price percent oscillator spiking over derivative oscillator, which had started to lose downward energy or gain upward energy, whichever way you want to look at it, has moved back down again. Price percent oscillator uh, heading down. We look at the Heiken Ashi candlestick. We haven't hit the low we hit before, but do pay attention to that. Of course, this latest candle has finished forming, so it is our latest candle. Yesterday, it was the first day. Remember, candles don't end until the time frame ends. Two-day candles take how many days? two days. So the first day, it's not a fully drawn candle. It gives you a hint, but not the answer as to what it's doing. Look at the half day. We can see where it crossed over going down in the afternoon on Tuesday and slid sideways down a little in the afternoon. Um, but again, where it ended up, it plumbed. Did it plumb a little deeper or hit about the same? Let's see. That's what's nice about honing in on this. We see the low was 433.85 in the morning, 434.03. So it was lower actually in the morning. It doesn't look that way. Huh. Uh, no, I take it that back. It was a little lower in the afternoon. Okay, I was right. But the way it ended up for the day was up 0.15%. So again, we've pushed through that not so hot. Uh, although it did connect a third candle in the morning. Um, the, the trend line, it has been broken, but again, not a big deal. Why? Because it's our half-day chart. The real important one is, is most important is the weekly 
Next to that is the two-day. That's where we are on the S&P. Now let's go to the weekly, take a look on the NASDAQ 100. So far this week, lower low having been reached. Price percent oscillator going down, down for the day. Just about the opposite of what the S&P was up. It was down 0.16%. Price percent oscillator spiking over, going down. Derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. Go to the two-day. And again, we can see we hit a lower low, red down candle, price percent oscillator, derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. Half day did go a little bit lower, and we should have already changed this. When you have a crossover, that's the time, of course, to change your trend line. We do this just so we can glance quickly at the charts and see which way they're going. Now, of course, with the two-day and the weekly, we put the arrow in. We don't put a crossover uh, horizontal line in, I'm sorry, vertical line in on the uh, half day just because we're not going to muck up our charts with more lines than we otherwise need. And again, this is the smallest chart and the least useful for making trading decisions. It's an intraday chart. It does give us a feel for what's happening. That's why we look at it to know what happened during the day. Remember, we're using Heiken Ashi candlesticks. So that's where we are on our stocks. Let's go to bonds. Bonds up for the day, 0.17%. Nonetheless, big down week underway. Weekly vertical crossover may happen. Again, it's a weekly candle. We're not closed on Friday yet. We may have that. You may have an opportunity to jump into a down weekly vertical crossover. That means shorting. What is the short chart? If I recall, TBF. Yes, that is the 20-year inverse. And of course, you could buy some shares, practice trade some shares. When we say buy here, we're not a stock calling service. We're an education firm. Talk to you about practice trading. You could practice trade going up. Potentially, we'll see how that works out when we get to Friday. That's just a heads up. To the newer folks, what do we see on the two-day? We see a big down candle, things moving down quite strongly, even though it was up a little bit. On Wednesday, still lots of down movement. And what do we see as far as the half day? We can see on our Heiken Ashi candlesticks, red down candle at the end of the day, price percent oscillator, not at the same angle. It petered that off a little bit, derivative oscillator losing some momentum throughout the course of the day. But overall, the hang on 20-year bonds is still strongly down. We go to gold, down for the day 0.44%. Of course, we are in a down trade on gold uh, on your practice trades. Hopefully, you shorted gold and went into that. This is the third, well, actually the fourth week, but the third strong, uh, third week of strong down moves, price percent oscillator heading down, derivative oscillator, two-day chart. Look at it spiking down, heading down. Again, everything on the way down. We could actually accentuate this by updating things a little bit. Let's, oh, that's not bad. Okay, there we go. And we look at the half day, and of course, it continues to move down. We could probably update, oh, tag on it, uh, screwed the two day up. There we go. But it's easy enough, just go back, grab it, reset it. This is what's so beautiful. If you are not trading on these charts, not expensive per month, uh, this is, of course, TC2000, the paid version. They also have a brokerage firm that when you do get into real trading, you can trade right from the screen. In addition to that, paper practice comes with all of the, uh, it, at any level. I think this is the silver level. And again, if you look in your show notes or the notes that are posted at the website every day, there's a link to $25 off. If you subscribe to TC2000 and you help us out, put a couple of shekels in our pocket. What do we see? Okay, there we are on the half day. We've got that fixed price percent oscillator, derivative oscillator going down. Lastly, we head to Bitcoin. What is Bitcoin up to? might cross over by the end of the week. Derivative oscillator just barely positive. Price percent oscillator just barely positive. Weekly down candle trying to form. This will be the third week of down movement. Bitcoin was up for the day 1.49%. Not a lot for Bitcoin. Still have a down red two-day candle. That shows you what happened 
on Tuesday. And we see the price percent oscillator heading down, derivative oscillator getting a little bit of downward momentum. Take a look at what happened intraday. We can see where Bitcoin really bounded down there on Tuesday, sliding sideways up a little bit, pushing through that half day trend line toward the end of the day and moving over. That's where we are, folks. As we end the day on Wednesday, go into Thursday. Don't forget Patreon members next Wednesday. Live question and answer call in session. You have stock charts, that is ETFs or stocks you want us to help you review for backtracking and potential practice trading going forward. Go ahead and get those to us. Also, questions you have, get those to us too. Thank you for all the Patreon support. We have a few Patreon slots. I'm talking like a couple, maybe three, that are open at the $30 level. There might be one at the $100 level. But again, if you're interested in what we do and want to support us, we appreciate your help. We try to pay you back in spades. God bless, my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.